the seven deadly sins. We got pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, and sloth. Now I've seen a few of these videos floating around, but I wanted to put my own spin on it. We're gonna be going through the seven deadly sins of shonen anime characters. So I already got my list ready. Let's get right into it. We're gonna be starting off with Envy. I got a couple honorable mentions here. We got Gutaro from Demon Slayer and Endeavor from My Hero Academia. Now Gutaro, a very envious person. We saw with his interaction with Tengen that he was almost immediately envious of him as soon as he saw him. Also with the whole way his backstory played out, him being envious of the way Tengen was. Not only envious of him, but envious of Tanjiro's relationship with his sister. He compared Tanjiro's relationship to his own. But yeah, he didn't quite make the cut though. Same with Endeavor here. Now Endeavor was extremely envious of All Might to the point where he did anything to try to surpass him. Through his family under the bus, he didn't care for the well-being of his wife, for the well-being of his children at all not even for his peers everyone who stood in his way was an enemy in his eyes but you're probably wondering why doesn't endeavor make the cut well because we have the ultimate envious person in the character of donzo from naruto this guy right here single-handedly brung down the demise of the entire uchiha clan not only that but also all of konoha you seen with how he operated the anbu black ops the whole shady organization that he had going on everything that he just did behind the scenes was all shady and it was mostly due to the fact that he was envious of his peer hiruzen being the one to become the third hokage which donzo would have been took action in battle where hiruzen all that bottled up envy towards hiruzen caused him to just raise chaos among the Uchiha clan and not only that but the entire nation so yeah I'd say without a shadow of a doubt Donzo is by far probably the most envious character at least I can think of now moving on to the sin of greed and for my honorable mention here I have Kakazu from Naruto now if you know Kakazu he's all about money he's all about the paper like one of the main reason he joined the Akatsuki you know he was in it for the money it's funny because you know every Akatsuki member had kind of had their own reason but they all had their own backstories where we got to see why they joined how they joined and it was pretty ironic that Kakazu was the only one that joined it for a financial intent. By far one of the most greedy characters in the Naruto series. But he doesn't come close to who I chose dominant greedy character of all of shonen. And that is none other than Sinbad from Magi. This character right here, if you don't know about the Magi, fill you in. Sinbad is really a case of zero to hero now. I guess in some ways he wouldn't seem as like a greedy person, but his drive for power really is something reminiscent of greed at least in my opinion he really went from rags to riches became the king amassing such an amount of wealth made his name known to so many other nations not only that but also conquering so many dungeons that he just had several gin equips most other characters only having like one or two all this while being a side character i mean the man was so greedy he had to get his own spin-off where he was the main character like that's insanity you never really hear of this happening in shonen <laughs> bro was so greedy he broke the fourth wall got his own spin-off so yeah by far i would say in my opinion sinbad would probably be the most greedy character now moving on to the sin of sloth now i got an honorable mention here from pokemon we got the pokemon snorlax now the reason this character is in the honorable mention category is mostly because of their screen time while they're a very memorable pokemon i just don't feel comfortable putting snorlax as like the main sloth character for all of shonen i don't know i feel like the character that i chose here outshines them more in terms of their impact to the story and that character is none other than shikamaru now i try to avoid getting multiple characters from the same anime but shikamaru is undoubtedly the embodiment of sloth now what's interesting about his character though is that he was able to use his laziness as an advantage and that's what i think really makes it interesting he's not just like somebody who rots in his bed or doesn't rise to action at all he's so lazy and so intelligent that he was able to do everything he does so efficiently to the point where he's not really even doing much work he always found a loophole around everything like there was something that he thought was a drag to him he found a way around it that in my opinion would be like the perfect environment of someone who's lazy instead of not doing a task making the task easy enough to do or very simple now moving on to the sin of lust. Now for my honorable mention here, 
I got the character Manetta from My Hero Academia. Now Manetta here, he's a little sleazeball, no pun intended. He's kind of more on the creepy side. He has his moments here and there, but like, I feel like the one I chose just outshines him more. And that character is none other than Sanji from One Piece. Now, what makes Sanji such a lustful character is the fact that his lust actually impacted the plot, which is insane. During the Fishman Island arc, we all remember how he was getting hugged up by that mermaid. This dude has a crazy nosebleed and gives out his position, or actually all the of his comrades, leading to this whole thing where they had all because he couldn't keep his lust away. Like, it was crazy. You usually don't see something like that negatively impacting the plot. Like, that's how you know this is like crazy, which kind of sucks because Sanji is a very cold character. Like. When he's in action, he really delivers. He has some of the best fights, like with like hands down, Sanji versus Queen. When we saw Sanji during the Annie's lobby arc, that was really good. Sanji versus Doflamingo was pretty good. But yeah, in general, Sanji, like whenever he's on screen, like he delivers. Of course, like besides when he's being like very lustful and stuff, but yeah. Next up on the list of sins, we got gluttony. Now, for my honorable mentions, I actually have another One Piece character here, and that's none other than Luffy. Now, what's kind of funny is Luffy, a, a lot of his screen time is spent eating, which is pretty funny. Like, Luffy's not, like, Luffy being in the shape that he is, you wouldn't think that he's such a glutton. But, like, a lot of his motivation in the show is food. I've been noticing that at the end of some of the arcs, they're having a feast. And it's funny because a lot of the arcs start because of food. I mean, last arc, we literally had Luffy kicking down Kaido's empire with all for some red bean soup. The entire Yonko empire, all this dismantled child gave him some soup. Like, just let that sink in. That's actually insane when you think about it. That's not the main point of his character, of course. Like, he has a whole other aspect of his... That's only one aspect of his character. My choice for Gluttony was Charmy from Black Cloak. Now, Charmy's entire character, I would say, revolves around, like, eating and cooking. But she's not cooking, she's eating. Because of course, she cooks, cooks again. And then she goes and whoops some butt. Cooks, cooks. She goes whoops on somebody. And cooks, eats, cooks. You get the idea. If she's not cooking, she's eating. If she's not eating, she's out in battle. Which is actually pretty cool, like very straightforward character, I like it. But it's funny because she's not just a glutton herself, she actually gives out a lot of food to her comrades. Whenever she shows up to the battlefield, she's giving her food to her comrades and you know, they're able to restore their mana. And so her gluttony is actually important. It's actually an important role in this lore actually, which is pretty funny. But yeah, moving on to the next sin, the sin of ride now i know what you're thinking you probably have somebody in your head and that person is vegeta yes he is in my honorable mentions vegeta a very prideful character although i do think as the story progressed he's become less prideful like he's like don't get me wrong he's a very well-rounded character but i do think as time has gone on he's become a lot more humble and due to that i feel like it wouldn't really make sense to put him as the main character here because it would kind of undermine his character growth all of the character growth he went through you know he had a family he became way more humble he began actually wanting to take action for other people's sake not just his own basically the other character that i chose here is just just overshadows him basically not that vegeta is not a prideful character like he's known for being pride but I would have to give that title to none other than Escanor. Perfect matchup here. Which is pretty ironic. Escanor is actually the only character from Seven Deadly Sins that made it to a sin, Seven Deadly Sins. It just feels like when you actually evaluate the Seven Deadly Sins and watch that anime, Escanor is like the main one who actually embodies. Like the other characters, you probably have to really think about it and do some diving into their characters to actually say like, oh, okay, like, I can see them embodying that sin, but Espinor is like, from the moment we first saw him transform into his muscular form, it's like, oh, okay. And then ever since then, like every time, every time we see him during the day, and he's prideful, using that sun power, like you defeat me, who decided that? Did me lose to you? Who decided that? Like the embodiment of pride is perfect. Now moving on to the last, the seventh sin, the sin of wrath. 
Now, my honorable mention here might catch a lot of people by surprise, but I think Stone Freaks from Hunter Hunter is a very good candidate here. Now, he is an honorable mention because I do have another character that's a bit more of an embodiment here, but if you watched Hunter Hunter to the end, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. For the sake of his friends, Gon, he's just gonna crash out. Like, end of story. You are his friends, he's on you. <laughs> but yeah, when he found out that Kite was no longer with them, he absolutely snapped. Like, he sacrificed his Nen, he completely obliterated Pito. It was a complete Uno reverse card for his character. Like, it was insane. That literally went down in Shonen anime history. Such a change in attitude, like, completely dropped all of his goals and aspirations, all of his dreams. He just threw it away just to crash out, absolutely. But, do you gotta say, there's one character that's the ultimate crash out, the ultimate wrathful character. That's none other than Kid Buu from Dragon Ball Z. This character, this character right here, I could go on all day. Kid Buu literally traveled to the afterlife to catch a fade. It doesn't get any more symbolic than that. If you want somebody to embody the sin of wrath, traveling to the afterlife, mind you, while still being alive, this dude transcended an entire other realm. How do you go from the living realm to a spiritual realm to fight? Not only that, but this dude wiped out an entire galaxy searching for Goku and Vegeta. This dude was traveling through dimensions, through galaxies, through the cosmos, just destroying everything in his path just for a fight. And it's like, he's not a life form similar to humans, so obviously he could destroy planets after planets after planets and just reform his body. He could just crash out and destroy the entire universe like that. And then when he's done with the living world, he literally transcend dimensions, go on to fight people who aren't even alive anymore. Like, that's insane to think about. Bro has transcended a mortal level of crash out. Yeah, Kid Buu would be the ultimate, the ultimate embodiment of the sin of wrath, hands down. But yeah, I would say those are my choices for the seven deadly sins, the seven deadly sins shown in anime. And these are from shows that I've watched, and I know that there's other characters from other shows that I haven't watched. Like I've heard about Kenpachi from Bleach being a good candidate for wrath. Um, there's some other characters, but I haven't caught up to some of those shows, so I, I didn't feel comfortable putting like characters from shows I haven't watched. But yeah, that's my list. Let me know what characters you guys would want to put in the comments. If I want to see you guys' opinions. I think I got a pretty good list here. We got the Sin of Envy being Donzo. Sin of Greed being Sinbad. The Sin of Sloth being Shikamaru. The Sin of Lust being Sanji. The Sin of Gluttony being Charmy. The Sin of Pride being Escanor, and last but not least, The Sin of Wrath being Kid Buu. I do think those are pretty good choices there. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. This is the end of this. That right there was The Seven Deadly Sins of Shonen Anime. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.